All right. Hi, guys. Welcome to POV or My Therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you do not get paid. Um, I just spent a solid three minutes like trying to figure out what's wrong with the lighting, and hopefully the answer is nothing, but from my point of view, it's, I don't know, it just looks a little weird. So I'm going to have to do some extra color grading in this episode. But anyways, welcome back to another week of the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you do not complain. I don't, is that right? It's probably not, but I don't know. Anyways, right off the bat, exciting news, you guys. Exciting news. What is Divine wearing? Divine is wearing merch. She's wearing merch. Can you see that? Can you see the merch? It says, I don't want to get my makeup on it. It says POV. (laughs) There we go. It says POV, you're my therapist. You're my therapist. So yeah, um, it, this is so exciting. This is, for the people on the radio, this is a very light pink color, um, very baby pink color. And it says POV or my therapist and kind of, not kind of, but in a collegiate style uh, print. And in the middle is the crest of the Vine Philo Wellness Club. Um, and on the crest, there are two old school telephones that... Um, are facing away from each other and in the middle is a old school rotary dial yes for the young people here cell phones were not always the thing phones used to be on the wall and have uh cords um don't let that car go by i hate people i just hate people who drive like that it's so annoying and like those annoying ass cars anyways And then there are roses and there is a banner at the bottom that says the philosophers because that is our official name. So I'm really excited. Um, I'm just excited to have this for you guys. Um, I have another piece of merch. I have a a shirt. It is uh, white and green. And it says the same thing, POV or my therapist. And then this also comes in a tote bag. And you can find it at Vine Philo, V I N E P H I L O dot com. W dot Vine Philo, V I N E P H I L O dot com. And I will also have that in this episode description. So go ahead and take a look. And yes, for the people wondering shipping is worldwide shipping is worldwide yeah I know because I have a lot of listeners in South Africa so um and the continent of Africa in general so uh yeah shipping is worldwide I've already sent some stuff to Canada very exciting very exciting and um and yeah so go ahead if you really want to support me this is a great way to do it um it's definitely going to enable me to do this longer and kind of be a little less stressed out because I don't know if y'all know this but I work 40 hours a week and sometimes and I work from home and sometimes I have to kind of juggle multiple things at once um and there's a lot of stuff like to keep this podcast running that there's a cost to it there's a cost for the subscription I use to edit the podcast there's a cost for um I gotta use electricity like and I don't know if y'all have noticed but between this episode and the last episode the lighting has just been so much yummier and the reason why is because someone Kenya thank you so much um bought me uh another ring light that was on my Amazon wish list so let me show you all the state of my headphones not to turn this into an infomercial of poor divine anyways (laughs) go buy some merch my headphones are falling apart like they are falling apart like look at this wire okay so there's a lot of stuff that (laughs) that needs to be updated and just to make the podcast better and like to grow it and I have so many goals and plans for season three that I'm already thinking about I've been thinking about these things but to be able to get it it's gonna be very costly and I I need my big break I need my I need my TikTok moment where like one of my videos gets like a million likes and has like seven million views and like and then somebody's like divine do you want like an official podcast podcast where like you get an office and everything and you get guests and everything and when I get guests it is really on and popping because the women that I want to speak to for this podcast I already know who they are bitch I know who they are and um and I just 
I, there's just so much that could be talked about and I'm really excited for it. But anyway, so this is a small step towards a very large goal. <laughs> so, and I think periodically I am going to be releasing new merch cause I have a bunch of ideas and like, there's just some visuals that are just so cool. They belong on a fucking t-shirt or a tote bag and I'm a tote bag beach. I got a, um, a basket in my room full of tote bags. Okay. So yeah. Uh, so all of that is to say merch is now available and, um, Ding, and you can find it in the episode description for uh, this episode. So buy yourself a piece of merch. And also, if you guys are trying to buy um, merch for Christmas time, to ensure that you get what you want when you want it, um, I would definitely recommend buying before November 30th. Okay? And uh, getting it shipped in. Because I know some people were like, oh, there's going to be a great Christmas present for whoever. But I would do that before December 1st. Okay. As a small business, it's just me. <laughs> Yesterday I was packing up some orders cause I, I talked about it on TikTok and, and on Instagram and I was packing up some orders and girl, I was like, this is a lot. Like my room has never felt so small and I have a big ass room. My room has never felt so small. And I was like, Oh my God. But I came up with a really good system. So I'm just, I'm just excited. I feel really supported. I feel really loved. And also every, <laughs> every purchase comes with some stickers. Um, I, I reordered the stickers because I didn't like the ones I got, but, um, yeah, they were cool, but the quality was just not my fave. But anyways, um, so it comes with some stickers and a thank you note from me. That's actually handwritten. And if you can't understand my handwriting, I am so sorry. The girl has carpal tunnel and arthritis. So this is really like the amount of times I've had to like start over a note. Um, but like, yeah, I try to write something different every note. But yeah, so I'm just really thankful. <laughs> That's it. Um, yeah, this episode, Divine does have nails. Can you tell? She has little black nubby fingers because um, my nails were really brittle. And I went and I got that broken nail removed and my nail tech was like, girl, let's take a break. And I was like, no. <laughs> so I'm going to go see him the day before Thanksgiving um, to get a nice, long, sexy set. Okay. Um, but yeah, uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so today's episode, I actually outlined what I was going to talk about because I got a lot on my mind, girl. I got a lot on my mind. Um, the I'm not going to talk about my personal life today because I'm just not feeling it. Um, I had a conversation last night with somebody that really kind of made me embarrassed. Um, not embarrassed, but just, I don't know. I just was just like, I need to step away from my personal I need to step away from my feelings for a while and get my shit back in order and get like my mental back in order. But also I'm about to be on my period. So maybe that's that. But anyways, um, it is a beautiful day in Georgia today. And by beautiful, I mean, it is rainy and the leaves are on the ground and it is fall and it is just a cozy, comfy day. And I'm actually really happy that I'm actually wearing this POV My Therapist sweater because it's the perfect time to wear this. Um, but I thought today we would have a nice little conversation about the things that have been keeping me entertained as of recent and that I've just found really great interest in. And I made some notes on my phone. So, um, so yeah, we're just going to talk about it. Uh, the thing that I wanted to talk about is that, cause you know, I'm on TikTok a lot. I'm on TikTok. I spend a lot of time on TikTok, on Twitter, and a lot of the times the things that are blasting off on TikTok make their way through Twitter or like even somebody doesn't even have to be getting interaction on TikTok, but somebody on Twitter will find it, repost it to Twitter and then gives it a whole new breath of life. And normally that breath of life is terrible because the people on Twitter are so malicious and just horrible. Like I'm not even kidding. They're so negative. Like there's just something wrong with a lot of them there. Um, and like, I think a lot of times people just don't realize that you don't have to say every negative thing that comes into your mind. You don't, you don't. The world will be okay without your shitty opinion. Okay. Yeah. Says the girl with a podcast. If a girl with a podcast is telling you this, you got to make sure you're playing it straight, okay? Because some people just, they get on Twitter and they will at people. Like, for example, Chloe Bailey. Okay, so what if you don't, you don't like that she's very sexy, she's very, she's got a lot of oomph, you know what I'm saying? You can think that. And also, that's your prerogative to think that. You have clo- cl- uh, clotor, what? Clitoris, lol. You have 
Twitter close friends. That is what that Twitter close friends is for, in my opinion. My opinion, Twitter close friends is for you to talk shit, okay? Because people are going to see what you post. Chloe Bailey is going to see what you post. A lot of these girls are going to see what you post. I have opinions too. I have petty opinions too. But you know where that go? My Twitter close friends. And if it's too petty, in my drafts. Because I know that the world does not need any more negativity than it has in it now. So I try to be, the shit I put out there, I try to be nice about it. And ooh girl, do sometimes, I want to be a bitch. I want to be a B-I-T-C-H. I want to hurt some feelings. But then I got to sit back and I ask myself, am I really creating value in this world when I say shit like this? And the answer, most of the time, is no. So it goes in my Twitter drafts. Some of you need to do this because y'all got shitty fucking opinions and you will ride or die for it. And I'm like, shut the hell up anyways so that was something that was on my mind and um and I was thinking about that a lot too because you know um there's a girl on uh TikTok named Clark and she was she's very wealthy and very jealous of her bank account but um yeah some other girl was like saying how she probably has rich parents she probably has this and that and she probably has rich parents. She's probably upper middle class or lower middle class. Or like she just, you know, she's lying about where her money comes from. And I think the thing that really made me sad about that was, I don't know. You can tell when somebody doesn't believe in themselves. You can tell when somebody, somebody who is angry at what other people have. Number one, you're paying way too much attention to what other people have. Number two, you're definitely not paying enough attention to yourself. Number three, you you are having this thought process because you want what they have. You can't have it. So you find a way to to kind of become the victim in a story that doesn't even involve you, like at all, at all. And people get so upset. And like, and a lot of the times, like when I see people really upset about like the dumbest shit, I'm like, damn, you really don't believe that it's possible for you to get this. Like the people that were mad about that girl and her husband enjoying each other in the garden over a cup of coffee in the morning, the people that were upset about that, if you had a negative reaction to that, the reason is because you probably thought, one, you're never going to get a husband, two, you're never going to have a garden, three, you're never going to have a cup of coffee. I don't fucking know. Like there's something in there that triggered you that just made you feel like, oh, I'm never going to get this thing. So let me hate somebody who has it right now. And like the thing is, I think jealousy and envy are very normal emotions and they're very normal feelings, but they're feelings that are dangerous that you have to nip it in the bud because it turns you bitter. It turns you bitter. It makes you angry. It makes you spiteful. And when you become spiteful, like there's a very thin line between motivation, jealousy, spitefulness, and full-blown hatred. And when you're in that land, hatred over what people have all the time, like you see people like killing each other over the dumbest shit, like somebody killing somebody else because they had like Gucci, a Gucci bag or like something stupid, like something really dumb, like, like pop smoke dying over a Rolex. Like that's dumb. That's dumb. That is a stupid reason to die. Or sorry, not a stupid reason. It is a stupid reason to die. But I'm when I say that, I don't mean like the victim is the problem. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying like that is a stupid reason to kill somebody. But like when you look at it and you look at it like front first, right? And you take a couple steps back. It's like the person who killed him over that Rolex wanted the Rolex or wanted to sell the Rolex, wanted that money for the Rolex, um, immediate gratification. So they went after the thing that they wanted. Um, they, they they want the money they want the Rolex, they want whatever. They never think that in their life, besides taking it from somebody at whatever cost that they could ever get that amount of money. The only way they can see themselves getting that is by taking it from somebody else. And where does that stem from? That stems from envy. That stems from looking at something that somebody else have has, thinking that they don't deserve it, that you deserve it more. And that why is your life so different that, that I can't have this thing that you have? You don't deserve it. I deserve it. I'm going to take it from you. 
Like, that's how people, like, that is the thought process of people really thinking very, like, they just belittle people's lives. Like, they turn your life into into a tiny bump that they have to get over to get to the thing that they want. And that really bothers me. That really bothers me that somebody's existence can be boiled down into somebody else's envy and bitterness and hatred and greed. Like, it really fucks with me. And I think about that all the time. Every time I see, like, girls on the internet being, like, hateful to people because of what they have, I'm like, put you in the right situation, give you enough bitterness in your chest, keep living like that for for a month, for two months, three months, you're willing to kill somebody for the thing that you want. Or steal it for somebody. Like, yeah, it's just, it's crazy. Like, and I see it all the time. And, like, you have to realize that, like, a lot of these violent acts, they stem from a mustard seed. They are so small. It is a tiny thought that just blooms and blooms and blooms and blooms until it just, it becomes a fucking weed. Like, it just takes over everything. And, like, I don't think people realize that, like, you really have to check yourself. My eye just twitched like crazy. You really have to check yourself. If you're not getting the things that you want, what's standing in your way? Is it you? If you think the answer is somebody else, you got to reevaluate. There are systemic issues that stand that block you, but there's always a way to get around a lot of these things. It will be 10 times harder, but there's a way to get around it. A million percent. Um... On my way back from the airport last week, and I can't believe I, like, forgot about this, but my Uber driver was this very young, my Uber driver was this very young African guy, and I ain't gonna lie to you, um, not to be crazy, but, like, I see how some people can fuck their Uber Uber drivers, because he was very fun, and, like, you know, like, when you can tell somebody's attracted to you, it was given that. But, um, but, you know, I mind my manners. I'm a child of God. I'm not a, I'm not a hoochie. I'm a, I'm a child of God. I'm a, I ain't no hussy. All right. So I minded myself. Um, chastity belt was on. So, uh, he was telling me how he grew up in Africa and he was like very poor. He lived in poverty and how basically he had his eye on the motherfucking prize y'all And this guy went from, in six years of being able to come to America with nothing, he's, now he owns the car that he's driving for Uber, that he's driving Uber in. He has his own house, like, and, like, I think in, like, a month or so, he's going to get his daughter from Africa and bring her back, and he hasn't seen her in, like, six years. Like, If somebody who is literally starting with nothing and he was talking about how difficult it was to get any type of government assistance, if somebody is starting from nothing like that and they can accomplish that much, I'm not looking at nobody saying, why can't you do it? I'm not saying that to belittle nobody, but it's really like that person had the motivation and they found a way. You too can find a way. There is nothing that can stop you if you really believe in yourself. Like, you have the ability to do anything that you want in this life. You just have to believe it. And talking to him was, like, a really good reminder. And he told me he was from um, uh, Ivory Coast. I was trying to, I know, I know I can see the spelling in my head, but I don't want to sound stupid and mispronounce it. Cote d'Ivoire? Anyways, but he told me where he was from and, like, and he told me a bunch of other stuff and, like, And it was just, and he was so optimistic. Like, there was just so much optimism in him. And he was talking about how, like, one of his friends from the, from home became, like, a soccer star. And, and how, like, it makes him so happy to see his friend become, like, a millionaire and do all the things that, you know, he always dreamed of doing. And, like, and not anywhere in this conversation did I feel a sense of spite. And you know how easy it is to become spiteful of somebody that you were in the mud with? And they got everything that they wanted and you're still working on yourself. It's really easy. But you have to really, if, but if you believe that you can get that too, it's not a problem. And you're just like, damn, like this just motivates me a little bit more. But, um, but yeah, I feel like that was an important conversation to have because I've just been seeing a lot of bitterness on this here internet. 
But um, but the next couple of things I'm going to talk about. So I've been watching a lot of TV. Okay, I've been watching a lot of TV because I've been at my computer. I've been, you know, I've been traveling. I've been doing a lot of stuff. That's so funny. Like the two opposite things. I've been at my computer. I've been traveling. But I've had a lot of time to glue my eyes to a screen is what I'm trying to tell you. Um, and y'all, this week I watched Untold, Untold, Unsolved Mysteries. And like one of them that like really, really fucked with me was this story about this girl named, um, I want to show y'all. I want y'all to be able to see the shirt. <laughs> period so one of the episodes that it's actually kind of cold now jesus christ um but one of the episodes that kind of really fucked with me was this story about this girl named marliz where basically she was she went missing and she haunted her the apartment that she used to live in and this lady um was talking about how ever since she moved into the apartment she kept having these terrible terrible nightmares and she couldn't like she couldn't get away from the nightmares and when she moved out of the apartment, cause like there was one night where like some real poltergeisty shit started going down, like, uh, the, the wind, like the doors and the cupboards were all shutting and opening and shutting and opening. And then she said that her daughter saw a lady in the apartment and she was like, my Liz, she was calling her my Liz, but the woman was just like, my Liz, like who the fuck is my Liz? Like there's nobody else in this apartment, but girl, you're kind of scaring me. Swap. So, um, but later on she found out that the girl that went missing in the apartment, her name was Marliz and she was abducted off the street and she'd have these really creepy dreams about like getting abducted off the street and, um, being in a basement and being like tortured and stuff like that. And it was really grim. Like it was really just fucked up. Um, and they did end up finding out what happening, what happened to the Marliz girl and I think the thing that really had me 90 shades of what the fuck was upon finding out what happened to this Marliz girl, they also found out that this same guy held a woman for hostage. He held a woman hostage for seven years. For seven years. That is nearly a decade. I, and I'm getting shivers just thinking about it. I don't know how I would be able to survive. I don't know. I feel like I would, I would, I really think I would, I would, I'd have to cut the cord. And like, I, I don't know, being, and like, that got me thinking, being abducted, first of all, already terrifying. I feel like, I don't know, I just can't handle really bad stuff happening to me. And like, all the time, like, I'm constantly praying, like, God, don't let anything bad happen to me. Like, girl, you know, I'm very weak. I don't, I'm not a strong soldier. Any hint of complication of scary I'm like listen end it right now like I can't suffer I can't go through shit I'm I'm not a survivor y'all like I'm not a survivor like I'm just not like I remember watching The Walking Dead and being like y'all would have to kill me y'all would have to kill me like when COVID first started I was like if people start turning into zombies and shit and they really turn up into The Walking Dead up in here I'm taking a funky drink and I'm taking a, the long nap because why do I want to, we're not going into this. We're not going into this, but this poor girl was abducted for seven years and this man held her captive in his basement under a mattress and, um, and put her head in this box that he made so that nobody would be able to hear her scream. <sighs> and he was just like a very sadic, a sadistic sadistic person and just like very strange um I mean clearly you're fucking strange if you're kidnapping women off the street he held this poor girl captive seven years and before her before he'd done that he abducted Marliz and he accidentally killed her because he was trying to sever her vocal cords and he accidentally murdered her so and he had a wife and the wife was really young and she was just, she was only 17. And she was just really scared of everything. So poor Marla's, um, nobody could find her body. And even when the guy ended up getting arrested and 
when his wife went to the police and like they drove up there multiple times trying to find Martin Luther's body they could never find her body enter like two decades later this lady who's in this girl's apartment who she leaves the apartment after all that poltergeisty shit is happening and she moves into her own, a different apartment and she's still having the dreams and she's dreaming numbers and like letters and stuff and she writes it all down and it turns out to be the coordinates of Marla's or near where Marla's is body should be and they're going to be searching that area trying to find um her body but that those numbers and those letters were close to a landmark that the man's wife had remembered seeing when they went to get rid of Marlis's body. <sighs> There's like so many levels to this that it's just like so disturbing to me. And like, I just, I don't know you guys, like sometimes I hear all these stories and like even when I went to go get my nails done, I was sitting there and I was listening to um, this lady tell my nail tag about her niece and like how her niece was going through all of this terrible stuff and how her niece just had a baby and her niece was addicted to drugs and guess who started her on the drugs her own dad and then they were talking about like how there was a lot of trauma in that family because like there was a lot of like really creepy stuff going on like with the dad and his kids and like yeah that's what I mean and I was just like men they're scary people they're really scary like not to be like an alarmist but like that's really scary and like you never hear about women being so violent and terrifying and like and it's just like uh, y'all scare me um so anyways so that lady basically had like a very spiritual you know ambiance and whatever and it got me thinking about how I did not want to go on this damn New York trip and how, you know, I should be listening to my intuition. Yeah, don't look at that. That's my wig. Um, how I should be listening to my intuition a lot more than I do listen to it. And and how I always have like these headaches and like um, one of my friends was like, you know, psychic people have a lot of headaches. I'm not saying that I'm psychic, but I'm just saying I'm highly intuitive and spiritual. So don't call me a cuckoo banana bird. Um, but it got, I was, I remember I was telling her about my grandmother and how my grandmother used to see ghosts and it got to the point where she saw so many of them that she just didn't, she was not really interested in, uh, interacting with them because they all needed something from her. And you can imagine that if you're a ghost, you're trying to leave this realm and you're trying to find peace and you're not having peace. So, um, it got to the point where she just pretended like everybody was human or a ghost. And so she did not interact with a lot of people. And, um, and it made me really, you know, I was thinking about Marlis and I was thinking about that. And I was thinking about how desperate this girl was to get somebody to find her body and to lay her in like her final place of rest. And it just made me think about how, like, a lot of times people like to pretend that we are just flesh and bone and even like blood and like when you accidentally hurt yourself and you start bleeding like people are always like <gasps> they start panicking because you're like fuck there's something in you that's coming out it's really scary but when you really get down to it and like you get into like some crazy metaphysical type shit like people there's so much energy like running through you like your your brain is shooting off electricity the same electricity that's recording my podcast that's recording that's got these lights coming at me that's got these little lights flickering in the back like all of these things like all of this energy just moving around and like creating more energy and more energy and more energy and like and I I really want people to remember like at our basic core at the core of us like there is a soul inside of us and it goes somewhere once our body is no longer here and it's bruised and it holds energy and and like you can feel it and like I don't know if you ever feel this but like sometimes I have these like um when something really hurts me when something really hurts me and it causes me a lot of anxiety and a lot of pain like emotionally my 
like emotional pain and trauma like literally sits in my womb it feels like a hard hard rock just in my uterus like that's exactly what it feels like and I remember there was a time when like I had like a very like traumatic moment and that shit was sitting in my womb like a rock like I felt like my bladder was twisted I couldn't like use the bathroom like it was really bad like I very much carried trauma in my womb and I remember like I had a a therapy session where I finally cried and I felt like that rock just like turn into sand and like deteriorate and like I it felt like I was gonna have a hernia like and that and then once I got it all out that hernia was like gone and and I just I want you to be kinder to yourself like if there are things that are bothering you to be okay with the fact that there is pain that you carry in your life um and to to extend that same gentleness to other people because I do think despite popular belief we have a responsibility for the well-being of other people and and I think we carry so many things that we can't see that are not physical we carry it physically and if I can, if somebody else can cause me this much grief to literally put pain in my stomach. And like you hear about it all the time. Girls who are in terrible relationships and they have cancer, they're losing their hair. They just have all of these stress factors and like literal illnesses. And then they, the relationship ends and all of a sudden their cam, their camera, their cancer has gone. Their hair is growing back. Like they're diagnosed with all these illnesses and then, you know, they release the stress and and it and they're fine this is not me being like a vegan oil essential oils bitch this is not me being that um along with traditional medicine which I adhere to um traditional western medicine um but I also believe that you know your body is a body it's a vessel and it is very spiritually intertwined with you and I think that that is something we should keep in mind. I think we ought to be nicer to ourselves and kinder and more gentler to ourselves and be okay with the fact that it doesn't matter if you're 30 years old. If something happened when you were a baby and it hurt you and you carry it with you, you have you owe it to yourself to release that. Um, you know, and it, it's just sad. You don't want to go through your whole life dealing with that. Like, it's crazy. My mom, not to put her business out there, my mom is older. Because she'll whoop my ass if I tell you how old she is. My mom is older. And now that she's retired, and the same thing goes with my uncle, who's a couple years older than my mom. Now that he's retired, you know these two, they is having panic attacks. They are having panic attacks. Yes. Like, have to be medicated. Panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And the reason why is because so much of the time, like, as, as, um... Caribbean people as Caribbean people parents go through all this shit ethnic migrants you know they go through all this shit and a lot of trauma and they they have to they're 21 okay leaving their whole life behind with no parent sailing across the ocean blue by themselves sometimes in a dinghy okay to get here to this country to hopefully make a life for themselves and so many of them make a life for themselves i'm so sorry just throw me in the water throw me in the water at 24 my mother had a child she was in school she was like she had a house miss girl was a home owner okay at 24, she had so much going for her. I am 27. And I have merch. <laughs> Listen, I have merch in a hot pocket, bitch. And a pack of gum. And a pretty killer makeup um collection. Period. Um, yeah. So, they, you know, they go through all of this shit. Uh, 
to to make a life and it's a lot of trauma and they grew up with people who they were like you're not finna why are you crying why are you crying like I, my mom tells me about all the like really traumatic stuff that happened to her when she was a kid and I'm just like you're really remarkably stable are you okay and the answer is a resounding no she's not okay because for a long time she suppressed a lot of those feelings and a lot of that trauma and she didn't engage with it whatsoever and like she would look at me like I was crazy when I'm like having my emotional meltdown she's like what is mama to she's like when I was young I went through this that and the other okay well you know she had a lot of things to fill up that empty time she had work she had her hobby she had all of those things now that she's retired and she has a lot of moments that are not filled with high stress levels she has time to think and ponder and now she is having a lot of ptsd and the same thing goes with my uncle they both are dealing with it um and and it's because of the things that they went through that they never dealt with that they thought you know, they had a lot of uh, assumptions about people that went through therapy and all of those things. But now that they're at this stage and all, also like I'm normalizing it for my mom for sure. And um, and even my uncle too, it, they kind of realize like, wow, like this shit really sits with you. It sits with you a lot. And my mom's, you know, she's constantly telling me that like she wishes that she had dealt with a lot of stuff when she was younger that there were just things that she wished she never had to go through and um and yeah and I think now it's it must be really hard to be an older person and to have to kind of pick through the parts of yourself that you've suppressed so you can have some ease in the time that you were supposed to be resting you know so yeah uh, moving on to the next topic <laughs> along with on the um fucking topic of uh on the topic yes we need to talk about this on the topic of unsolved mysteries okay um a couple of years ago um the first time I watched unsolved mysteries I this is I think this might actually be a core memory because I literally remember I was making Caesar salad wraps and I was standing in my kitchen and I was making Caesar salad wraps and like every time you make a recipe you just use so many dishes and I remember I was washing dishes and and I put it on my phone and I was watching Unsolved Mysteries and I got to this episode where I had never heard of like I don't know maybe it's because I'm American but I had never heard of like French men killing people you know um but then I realized it's a worldwide epidemic so yay so, uh, I was watching Unsolved Mysteries and this French guy, um, he killed his whole family. He killed them all. And then he just ran away. He just disappeared into France, into the French countryside. And they've not been able to find him. And that was what the whole episode was about. So that was like the first time I was like, oh my God, like this is a common thing. And he, uh, did this in August I remember specifically that he did it in August and then the next time that like I was thinking about something similar was that guy um what's his name that Chris guy he there was a Netflix special about them he killed his wife and his two daughters and um and it was all because of his mistress or whatever anyways this is a common trope apparently like Men killing their whole families because they want to run off with their mistress, which is so stupid. Just get a divorce. Um, but whatever. So there's a term for them called family annihilators, which like they can't just leave the wife. Like they have to ki- like they have to annihilate the entire family unit to so that in their mind it just never existed. Very fucked up. Very terrible. This is what I've been watching hate that for myself um I'm on Twitter minding my business not really and that clip of that guy his name is Toby he's a rapper he's always in like mint colors and his wife is a rapper with him and they have like a whole family they have a whole group or whatever 
music is great. I'm like listening to it on Spotify, it's whatever. Never in my life did I think I would watch a clip of him where he basically is telling his wife that he does not like her, which is so crazy to me. And they're talking about their love story and he's basically talking about how she was not his first choice and that he didn't really like her. And then he kind of just settled for her. But to her, like, to her, it was like this grand love story. To him, I don't know what it was to him, but Lord, have mercy. Um, There was a clip of him going around where he was recording and... Ooh, my Amazon truck is here. Where he was recording and he, she says, she says something like, I'm great. Like something silly. She's just being a silly billy. The look on this man's face. The look on this man's face. I don't know if you ever looked at somebody and you can see the wave of emotions flowing through them. Looking at him, I was like, it's very much giving family annihilator. Like, there, this man has such a disdain for this woman. Such a disdain. And I remember that I was talking to somebody about this couple and she was telling me how for the longest time she thought that that girl's name was Fatima because he calls her fat like he literally calls her fat consistently her his nickname for her is fat I thought her name was Fatima her name no she was like I thought her name was Fatima her name is not Fatima somebody in the comments was saying how um Never let a man tell you they don't love you twice. And that got me thinking about how many times I have given men chances just for them to play in my mother fudging face. I didn't tell you all this story a couple weeks ago because I told it on on TikTok and and I was like, "Uh, let me not, you know, reiterate, like, you know, say the same thing again. Anyways. I think I'm really in my off men era and not just, I really mean it because like, I'm, I'm seriously wondering like if I, I think I, I don't, I don't know if I believe myself, but I feel like given the right person, I may be okay with a lady in a piece of plastic. Okay. Because these men right now, they may have the real thing, but it's just not worth the fucking trauma that they are putting people through. I just don't think it's worth it. And I, in the last year, I have not met a single man friend wise or relationship wise who has not made me feel like their existence is a burden to some woman that they're interacting with. Take that as you will. I... So anyways, my final straw was this boy and I talked to y'all about him before where he thought that I was talking about him on the podcast, all this bullshit, whatever. Anyways, this man hit me up because he wanted to, um, do the Nikki with me. And I almost said yes, but I just kept talking to him because, you know, men, they talk themselves out of some Nikki real easy because they just don't know when to shut up. And which is honestly a gift to me. Because if you don't know when to shut up, who am I to tell you when to shut up? Like, for real, you're gonna, you is gonna air yourself out and I'm truly thankful for it. So thank you. And that is exactly what he proceeded to do. He aired himself out because I was about to give him some coochies, okay? And literally all it took was like, I want to say the conversation was not even 30 minutes long. And I was like, all right, chastity belt back on. Like, y'all bugging. So he texted me and basically was like, um, let's hang out, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, are you sure? Cause you do this like every six months and you have the time you're like in crisis. So don't waste my time. Essentially. He tells me for some reason, I don't even remember why. And I feel like there's no reason in this, in any conversation to bring this up, but he decides to tell me that the sex worker he's been seeing looks exactly like me. Maybe he thought it was a compliment. I don't know. 
it I don't know what it was but I just know that it wasn't a compliment I don't I don't know what I don't know I don't know so he tells me that and then I'm like well why don't you continue to see her and why must you bother me and he's like well I can't afford her anymore all right um priceless okay which oh my god like honestly also a complicated topic because I'm just like I, I feel like if I had to charge a man like to screw me I would charge him like a million dollars just because like I think it's priceless like my love and my my situation my love and my hip swinging and my twerkulating is priceless like I couldn't even put a number on it I feel like any number is just shameful it's too low it's too fucking low like you got to give me something I have to give you something I it, it is either you have to make my life a million times easier than it already is now or I must I am legally obligated to put some trauma on you okay that's it legally obligated to put some trauma on you if you if I must put a price on my coochie man I gotta I gotta change your life in a bad way like or you have to make my life better in a great way like I could I could not put a dollar amount this is like some sign your life away in blood type shit like when I really think about it like (laughs) that's the and I'm I really feel like damn like at this point I really might wait till marriage I may you know I might die of of a virgin if I really am waiting until marriage because I just I don't know these guys I don't nothing about them is sexy they're annoying like even this guy that I just started talking to this man yesterday um he's asking what I'm doing I'm like oh I'm packing boxes I'm doing this whatever he's like what's that for I'm like uh my podcast and then he's like asking me questions like he I don't know I think in his head he's like oh like little her little podcast her little her little Instagram her little TikTok her little whatever you know what I'm saying because people don't I don't even know but to him like it's just like I'm saying I am so therefore I am but I'm not really you know he proceeds to ask me if your uh, social media got deleted would that affect your life in any way that's so patronizing to me because obviously the thing you want to see is like you have like the stereotypical thought of what women who are influencers are like they work in social media like you have a predisposed notion of what they are and what they're like and you're already asking me to see if I fit in that and I'm like I'm not about to try to convince you shit I'm not about to try to me as a woman convince you as a man of anything no it is what it is you take me as I am or you go away like why are you here like I, and it bought it it's so annoying because I think about how easy it is to make friends and like how easy it is to make women friends and like you you see a girl you're like oh I like the way she looks or I like her purse let me tell her I like her purse hey girl I like your purse oh my god thank you girl I like your purse too and then they're like or maybe they're like I like your shoes or like or they start telling you where they got the purse from and then you start having a whole conversation fast forward 10 years that bitch is your best friend like you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not that hard. It shouldn't be that hard. But it just is. And, like, and maybe it's me. It's me. Huh? Like, I'm the problem. It's me. Like, is that it? Like, I don't know. Like, maybe it is me. Maybe it is me. Like, maybe I'm hard to talk to. Or maybe I just find it hard to talk to people. I don't fucking know. But, yeah, I just really hated that. And I was just like, damn, like. You didn't even make it. At the beginning of the day, I told him that most of my talking phases don't go past two weeks. And he was like, wow, I hope I make it past two weeks. Bro, you didn't even make it a day. You did not even make it a day. No. And like, but anyways. I thought I heard somebody call my name. Anyways, so um, 
Yeah, so I, that stupid boy, I almost gave him a second chance. Or actually like a tenth at this point. And, um, and yeah, all I had to do was wait for him to talk. And he talked himself right out of some punene, which was great for me because I would have regretted it anyways. It would not have been worth my while. So, you know, kudos to both of us for really making the best decision. His decision to keep talking and mine to keep listening. So, and therefore not give him anything at all. Um, oh, yeah. Anyways. So, uh, what's next on the conversation? Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Well, I covered all of my topics that I wanted to talk about. So I guess we're going to talk about something else now. Um, anyways, so, um, that being said, Please don't play with me. Hello? Hi. Okay. <laughs> I'm the problem. It's me. Anyways. So, um. Oh, it is my hair. That's so weird. So, yeah. So, a uh, very abrupt ending to our podcast today. Because I, let me tell you, I had a big ass cheeseburger before I started recording and the itis is kind of hitting hard. The itis is hitting hard and I have to go pack pack these boxes and I got to edit this episode to come out tomorrow. Um, I'm not the most, clearly I'm just not the most responsible person with time, but I don't know. One day we're going to get it together and we're going to work it out. Um, but yeah, so merch is now available. Yeah. Um, POV, you're my therapist, established 2001. I'm so excited, you guys. I, it really took a long time to get this together. And because I wanted to give you like the best, like I wanted to give you the best thing that I could muster. Because let me tell you something. I had ordered from like one of those online companies that like prints and ships everything for you. No, the shirt that I bought from them, like with, it had like a, a, the logo here, Yesterday, I'm looking in the mirror, there's a fucking hole in the collar. Like, the collar came undone. And I was like, yeah, no. I'm so happy that I got this merchandise because it is just a lot higher quality. It's double stitched. Like, it is just the way it's supposed to be. And, like, but anyway, so the merch is available at vinephilo, V I N E P H I L O dot com. And you can follow me on Instagram. And TikTok and Twitter, all at Vine Philo, the same names, um, except TikTok is Defile. Um, yeah, and also sign up for my newsletter because that's where I'm going to let you know about all things POV from now on. Um, I'm going to let you know about giveaways, about news, about stuff. I don't know, about stuff that's going to be happening. So, yeah. I'm really excited. This is a new era. We're standing, stepping into a new era, a new chapter of who we are. And I'm really excited. I hope this episode was fun for you. I hope it was not boring. I know my voice was a little bit low. That burger gave me the itis like real bad. Um, and now it's just hitting 10 times as hard. But anyways, I love you so much. I hope you have a wonderful day. I hope you have a wonderful week. I hope you feel loved, appreciated, and blessed. It has been such a joy to spend this hour with you. And yeah, go buy your merchandise. Worldwide shipping. I know you love it.